Hey everybody, how's it going? Dr. Spear here. I uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about fish growth and modeling fish growth. So I thought I'd come down here to the lake. I'm on the dock here at Hancock. It's a beautiful night. Um, we got a crowd over at White Beach. It sounds like they're having a good time. I hope they're not too distracting. So I just want to talk to you a little bit about um, uh, why we measure fish growth, but more importantly, how do we model it, the equations that we use, and then we're going to use those later on. So we talk about growth in fisheries a lot and most of the time when we're taking data on fish it's to measure their growth rate. Why is growth so important? A lot of reasons. Uh, one is it integrates fish health. So what that means is is that um, you can look at a fish's growth and tell is that fish doing well, is it not doing well. Uh, so this is sort of a catch-all thing, whether it's poor water quality, or they're too crowded, or you've got great water quality and they're not crowded, or they got a lot of food and not much food. Um, this is all going to uh, show up in the growth of the fish. It also in integrates ecosystem health, okay? If you've got good water quality and a functioning ecosystem um, and an undisturbed community, uh, the fish are going to do very well. But if we see that the fish are not doing well, if they're not growing as well, that suggests maybe there's something wrong with the water quality or something else in the ecosystem. Of course, fish are fished commercially. And so if you're looking at a commercial fishery, you really want to know a lot about growth. You want to know um, how quickly that biomass is going to be replaced once you pull it out of the water. How quickly are the fish going to get up to market size? That is an important aspect of commercial yield. Of course, fish are also very popular for sport. And most people would like to catch big fish versus small fish. Um, we don't give out trophies for the smallest fish you catch, but we do for the biggest fish you catch. And so again, understanding how the sport fish grow and looking at sport fish size, that is an important aspect. Uh, growth is important to mortality and natality, which of course is important to the overall fish population. Bigger fish um, might have lower mortality because they have fewer predators. They also have more potential prey. But on the flip side, bigger fish might have higher mortality because, as I mentioned, the sport fishermen might be going after the larger fish. Um, same thing with natality. Uh, the size of the female is going to determine how many eggs she can carry. Larger fish, more eggs. So again, growth is important. And also, growth is important to recruitment. Recruitment is a term we use a lot in fisheries, and it has something to do with when fish enter a new stage. And so we talk about recruitment um, from young of the year to juvenile to adult. Um, so when fish are born or, or, or from larval to juvenile to adult. You know, when fish are born, they're very different. They're very small. They're extremely vulnerable. They can't swim very well. You've got extreme mortality in those larval fish. But then if they can recruit to a larger size class, then they've got a better chance of survival. They're more interesting to us. Nobody um, is out there trying to harvest larval fish or catch larval fish. Um, we also talk about recruitment to different gears. And so if you've got very small fish, they're not very susceptible to electrofishing. Or maybe you've got a larger mesh size in your net. And as the fish grow, then they start to recruit to those gears and they become vulnerable to those gears. So there's a lot of reasons why we're concerned about growth in fish. And that's what I just mentioned there. You can recruit to the fishery, recruit to adulthood, so on. Now, one of the things you learn in fisheries is that a fish population is controlled by the three dynamic rate functions. Those are recruitment, growth, and mortality. And these are called dynamic rate functions. Dynamic means changing, so they change as conditions change. But if you think about it, if you know these three things about a population, then you can predict things about that population, and you can understand that population better. If you know recruitment, you know how many babies are produced. 
and how many babies make it to the juvenile stage and how many juveniles make it to the adult stage. So you know how many new fish you're getting. If you know growth, you know how fast the fish are putting on biomass, which we mentioned is important. And if you know mortality, how fast they're dying, then you know um, how fast the fish need to be replaced. If you know how many are coming into the population, how fast they're growing, and how fast they're dying, then you know something about that population and you can sort of predict um, how much biomass is going to be out there. And a lot of this is developed for the commercial fishery because they really want to know if I pull out a certain amount of biomass, how quickly will that biomass be replaced so I can pull it out again? And if I pull out too much, will that be bad for the population? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if I leave too much biomass in the water, um, you know, if it's a commercial fishery, that's potential profit there. But then these ideas also apply just as well to sport fisheries. One of the things we talk about with growth, and we can talk about the physiology of fish growth all day, but one of the most important concepts of fish is that they have indeterminate growth. Indeterminate growth means that their growth does not stop when they reach sexual maturity. It also means that they can have growth spurts. So a fish can grow, stop growing, grow, stop growing, reach sexual maturity, keep growing. Now you contrast that with determinate growth, say what humans have. We are born, we pretty much have a continuous growth phase until around the time we reach sexual maturity, and then that's it. Now we grow and we get bigger, we put on more um, you know, weight, but we don't grow in length once we reach sexual maturity, and we don't have a lot of start and stops. Once you stop growing, say at age you know, 18, 20, whenever you start, stop getting taller, that's pretty much it. You know, you're, I'm, I'm the same height I was when I was 18, but not so for a fish. A fish can stop growing and stop growing for a long time and then start growing again. I had some crappie that I did a research project on for my dissertation. Some of these fish, you know, probably hadn't really had any significant growth for five, six, seven years. But when I gave them excess feed, they started growing again. Um, so that's unique about fish. Now, it's not unlimited. That doesn't mean that a fish can grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. There's always a limit to growth. We'll talk about it in a second. How about let's talk about it right now. Does this mean a fish can grow forever? No. The fish is not going to grow forever. Ultimately, they're going to reach their asymptotic size depending upon what species they are and in what system they are. Now, if you look at this graph here, this is a very typical graph, and we're going to make a lot of these ourselves. This is length versus age. You've got length on the y-axis, age on the x-axis. And this is, for almost all fish species, in all situations, the graph is shaped like this. You have this early, rapid growth that begins to slow, but eventually reaches an asymptote. And this can be thought of as an individual fish growing, but usually we look at this in terms of a population. So this is the mean length at each age, and ultimately the fish sort of reach that plateau. Well, what sets that plateau? What are some of the things that limit maximum size? Um, you can think about this for a little bit, but the first is obvious genetics. Different species have different maximum sizes. And different individuals within a species are going to have slightly different genetics depending upon what their parents were like. And so fish are going to have some genetic limit to their growth rate and their maximum size. Of course, I said the environment's important too, the food supply. And so if a fish is not getting enough food, just like anything else, it's not going to grow as fast and it's not going to reach as large a size. Uh, how long the growing season is. Again, fish are indeterminate growers, and so when they do grow, it's when the water's warm enough and the food is plentiful enough for them to grow. 
And in your southern latitudes, they're going to have a longer growing season. In power plant lakes, they have a longer growing season. And so the fish tend to get to a larger maximum size relative to cooler areas. Of these, which do you think is the most important? Well, it kind of depends on how you look at it. Um, you know, you could argue that genetics is the most important because a uh, crappie is never going to get as big as a striped bass. But we like to think about, uh, excuse me, we like to think about food supply being the most important. Fish rarely grow at their genetic potential. Um, usually, food, uh, the growth of a fish is food limited. Um, again, temperature can have its effect. But normally, um, of all the things that we try to manipulate to control fish growth or affect fish growth, food is the most important. Now, can fish shrink? Can they get smaller? Uh, yes, in weight, but not really in length, just like you. And so, you can grow and then you can get heavier and then you can go on a diet and exercise and you can get lighter, but you don't get taller and shorter. And so if we're talking about the length of a fish, um, fish don't really shrink, but they can get heavier and lighter. And that's why we take length and weight because they are used in different ways. Okay, so let's go back to our kind of standard growth uh, uh, graph of fish growth and fish length at age. And we want to fit a line to these points, and we want an equation for this graph. Well, why do we want that? Why do we care about that? We can graph it. We can see what's going on. Why do we need an equation? Well, I mean, first off, we always fit an equation if we can, um, just because, um, you know, we can see how well the... the um, data are represented by a particular equation. We're trying, as scientists, we're trying to understand these natural phenomena and getting an equation to relate one thing to another is always important. But from a practical standpoint, we want an equation for this line so that we can model the population. And remember the three dynamic rate functions, growth was one of them. And if we know, um, if we have an equation relating length to age, then we can make predictions. We can predict how large, you know, how what size a fish is going to be at any given age. You know, you tell me a fish's age, I can give you my best guess at how big that fish is. And so if I'm trying to predict into the future, it's nice to be able to say, okay, this fish is so large now, and in two years we expect it to be this large. That's a reason why we want to try and fit this equation. Another reason we want to get that equation is it helps us to compare different systems. And so you can sort of infer which ones are growing better or uh, uh, you can infer, you know, the, the, compare the growth patterns between different um, populations by looking at the equations of their growth. Again, you can just graph it and you can see this, but it's nice to have that equation. Um, and so that's what this slide is saying here. We can compare growth between different populations, but also we can predict growth. And a, a lot of the, the modeling we do in fisheries, we need to have some idea of how fast those fish are growing. Okay, now this is not a realistic graph of fish length versus age. If this is what length versus age look like, if it was a straight line, then it would be very easy to get that equation. You know, y equals mx plus b. Simple, linear regression. And we wouldn't have to talk about it very long, and it, and it would just be something that you, you can do simply um, in Excel or with a calculator. Um, but it's not like that. It's curvilinear. It's never a straight line. You never see fish slowly increasing the same amount every year. They always have this initial burst of f rapid growth, which slowly slows down, but it forms a curve. Just like most things in ecology, most things in biology aren't linear, they're curvilinear. Well, this is, this just affects um, 
how we do the math. Because while it's very easy to get the equation for a straight line, it's not as easy to get the equation for a curved line. Okay, And so one of the things that you see in fish history is that different people proposed different equations to make that fish growth line. Okay, And there's several different names and, and they have different theoretical reasons for developing their equation and, and they all work pretty well. But the one that's most commonly used that you see everywhere is called the von Bertalanffy growth equation. And so let's see how, how the von Bertalanffy growth equation looks like or works. This is von Bertalanffy's equation and uh, he developed this based upon uh, the idea of you know, cells growing in three dimensions and dividing and he extrapolated that and came up with this equation which does a good job of fitting a line to typical fisheries data. Like I said, there's other people who have different kinds of equations, but this is the one most people use. So what do each of these things mean? Um, I don't know if this says it. Yes, it does say it. So L sub T is the length at time T. So this is what you're trying to predict, the length of a fish at any age. L sub infinity is called is the maximum length or the asymptotic length. And so this is the maximum length that the fish reach in that population. Not necessarily their genetic maximum, but in this population of fish, this is as long as we expect them to get. K is called the growth coefficient, the Brody growth coefficient. This is just a number that um, is used to predict how fast the fish are growing. Um, now you see E uh, is raised to the negative K times T times minus T sub zero. E is again the base of the natural log and whenever you're working with curved lines a lot of times you're working with logarithmic transformations and a lot of times when you're working with uh, living things you're using natural logs. So that's why we have base E T, again, is the time, so whatever age you're trying to predict size at. And T sub zero is a theoretical time when the fish was length zero. Um, you could say, oh, okay, well, T sub zero should be zero. They were length of zero the day they were born. Um, actually, that's not true. You could say that... that um, you know, when a fish is, is born or when a fish is in its egg, it already has length, so there's never a time when the fish was length zero. Don't worry about exactly what this is. This is simply um, a, a value, a theoretical value for when the fish was theoretically length zero. No fish is ever actually length zero, but this is just a theoretical value. It can take on negative values. This is not anything to sweat about what this means. The other parameters are much more important. Okay, so if we go out and collect a bunch of data, and, uh, well, excuse me, I'm, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself. If we take that previous equation and we plug a bunch of numbers into it, we'll get a graph shaped like this. Okay, that's how the von Bernalanffy equation fits this growth curve. But in real life we go the opposite way. We go out and we get a bunch of fish lengths at age and then we use that data to get the coefficients for the von Bertalanffy equation. And so we try to fit a von Bertalanffy equation to our existing data. Then if you say at, you know what size should the fish be at age five? I can plug it into the equation and I can give you an estimate. So like I said, the T sub zero is not an important parameter, but the others are. K is kind of a general coefficient that tells you how fast the fish grow. Larger values of K means that the fish grow faster. Now, remember, they grow faster. Not that they, not they get to a, a larger length. That's length sub infinity. Okay? It's how quickly they get to that maximum length. And so if you see you've got a K of 0 0.5, those fish grow very rapidly and then reach that plateau early in their life. When you've got a K of 0 0.015, 
the growth is not as rapid and they slowly approach and they almost get to the asymptotic length in this example by age 20. And if you look at here in this example, k equals 0 0.05, they grow very slowly and by age 20 they're nowhere near their asymptotic length. So this is how quickly you grow. It's a rate, not how big you get. So how do we use this equation? Again, I've already mentioned that to you. We get a sample of fish and we age them. This is why aging fish is such a big deal. Then we determine the mean length at each age. And then we need to fit this equation to that mean length at age data. And because it's curvilinear, it's not easy to do. It's not easy to solve like it is with linear equations. So we can use the computer, and the computer, you know, to fit that equation, the computer has to determine what's the value of L sub infinity, what's the value of K, and what's the value of T sub zero. And that's not a simple thing to do. So there's software called Fast Fisheries Assessment uh, simulation tool. Um, there are packages in R that will do this. Uh, sorry, a boat went by and the waves are hitting it, distracting me. Um, and so it's complicated but not difficult because we can just have the computer do the work for us. We can do it ourselves though, and this is what we'll do in class, is we can do something called a Ford Walford plot. And this is much simpler math that we'll do in Excel. And the Ford-Walford plot will tell us L sub infinity, K, and T sub zero using simple techniques. So we can do it either way. We can plug it in and just let the computer spit it out, or we can do the calculations in Excel ourselves. Either way, we are going to get values for these parameters. We have a von Bertalanffy equation that describes the growth of our sample population. Awesome. Um, so again, it's because we're talking about curvilinear math, we're talking about calculus, it's not easy to find these values, so we need specialized methods to find them. Um, and although I say that you know, fitting, uh, finding values for a straight line equation is simple and a curved line equation is difficult, really it used to be difficult. It used to be tedious math. Nowadays, there are software packages, so that's to our advantage, and, and we can do this a lot quicker now. And consequently, I think you're seeing a lot more of these values being published in the research because everybody can do it, you know, with the click of a mouse. Okay, so we're going to do some exercises later where we actually um, fit von Bernalanffy curves to existing data. Once we have that equation, then what can we do? We can model the growth. So, what do we expect the population to look like in the future? Because we can plug in numbers to the equation. We can compare growth rates, the K value, among different populations um, to see, you know, get an estimate of how quickly their fish are growing. And we can also compare that L sub infinity, those asymptotic lengths. We can say, look, um, based upon the von Bernalanffy curve, these fish probably will get larger than a different population. So that's how we use it. Okay. Now the previous equation was based upon length, but we can also modify it and we can uh, get a von Bernalanffy equation based upon weight. Uh, for the same reasons, you know, we, if we want to model something, and um, it's just a very simple change to the equation, so we often do this too, so we can model length and weight. Um, now if you look at a graph of growth in weight for a fish, it looks different than the growth in length. You can see here we've got a similar graph as before, we've got age on the x-axis, but this time we have weight on the y-axis. And you see it's more of an S-shaped curve. So the fish don't grow very quickly in weight when they're young. Then they hit that um, exponential growth phase where they're putting on weight at a very rapid rate. And then again, they start to plateau out and reach an asymptotic weight. So the shape's a little bit different compared to the length graph, but it's based on the same equation. We just modify the equation a little bit, and here's how. So this time, instead of L sub t, we have W sub t. 
oops, excuse me, I'm going to, um, I don't have these labeled. But you see it's the exact same equation as before, but now we're predicting the weight at time t. And we have the weight sub-infinity, or the asymptotic weight. And then we have the exact same parameters. I'm hoping that was a fireworks and not a gunshot. Um, <laughs> uh, we have the exact same parameters in the parentheses that we did on the length uh, equation, but we just take that whole thing and we cube it. And by doing this, we can get that S-shaped curve that um, we typically see in growth and weight. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop here. I'm going to break this into a couple parts. Uh, I'm going to perhaps take cover. Um, and, uh, and then I'm going to come back in a little bit and we're going to talk about other uh, growth relationships and how we use those in fisheries. All right, talk to you in a second.